Hello everyone. I'd like to do a little demonstration in PixInsight using the batch preprocessing script. Now this is a tool that allows you to calibrate, register, and integrate uh, all your data. And I find it very useful. I use it for all my pr processing. This particular demonstration I'd like to focus on using uh, dark flats instead of bias frames. Many of the new CMOS cameras, it's recommended to use dark flats to calibrate the images instead of bias frames. So I've set up an example here. So I've got an image here of the rosette and I've broken all the data that I need for this example. So just as an overview, I've got my lights here. They're separated by filter. So here are my hydrogen alpha. Let's just do that for, for this first test. Uh, here are my flats, again, separated by the filters. And here are my darks. So the flats I took at one second. So in order to take a dark flat, you need to take a dark at the same exposure as the flat. So in this case, one second. So in here, I've got all my, an example of 10, dark frames at one second exposure. As well, I have the four minute darks, which need to match the light frames. So with all this data, I should be able to plug in all these values into the batch preprocessing script. So we'll find that under the script section, batch processing, batch preprocessing. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'll add my lights. So as simple as clicking lights and going into your project folder, selecting the hydrogen alpha in this case, and I usually I just select all and open, and there are my lights. Now we're going to switch to the flats and do the same thing. and the darks. Now this is where it gets interesting. So I'm just going to select add darks and first I'm going to choose all the one second darks and all I have to do is add the second group of darks within this set. So watch what will happen. Okay so you see the batch preprocessing tool has separated the one second darks from the 240 second darks nicely for us. And using this method, it will allow us to calibrate the flats properly. The batch preprocessor will automatically select the one second frames to calibrate these. Now, with regards to the CMOS camera, there's a couple of special settings that we need to double check that we have. So the first thing you want to ensure is the optimized dark frames checkbox is deselected. This is very important. I won't get into all the details here, but for this particular example, but turn that off. And this is a monochrome sensor, so CFA is not checked. Um, we'll keep those on. And in this case, we're not using any master frames. We'll get into that in the second lesson, but right now we'll leave those off and I'm going to select a registration image and for this example I'll just choose the first frame of my hydrogen alpha. Now for this example I'm only going to do one filter. You can add multiple filters at once in the batch preprocessor but to keep this simple I'll just I'll just use the hydrogen alpha for one. Now the op output directory now this is just my style. I just create a new directory within my project and I just call it PI. And we're not going to be drizzling the data. And for this example, I'm going to integrate the image just to show the full work through if uh, you're coming from Deep Sky Stacker and you just want to see the entire workflow. So 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click Diagnostics here to make sure that there's no errors that pop up. And typically I know I'm okay usually when I get this error where it says no bias frames have been selected. That's fine. We won't be using them. So now that I have everything set up, I can click Run and let BPP do its thing. Okay, so now that the batch preprocessing script is complete, uh, the window comes back here. And just as a, as a little tip, what you can do is uh, you, can, you can drag this instance onto your desktop in case you wanted to rerun it for whatever reason. It will save all the settings that you've, you've entered. And I'm going to exit there. And what I'd like to do is show you the structure of the output folder. So remember, I created a PI folder in my project. So within there, I'm left with uh, quite a number of directories that uh, PixInsight created. So we've got the calibrated folder. And within there, it's put the flats and the lights. These are all calibrated. Uh, there's a log folder, which is interesting. It saves all the information from the process console. It's quite handy if you ever want to go back and see what it did or see which image you used as a registration one. Uh, the registered folder has all the registered frames to that image that I selected. And finally, the most important is the master directory. So within here, we now have a number of new files. We've got two new master dark, darks, one for the one second and one for the 240 second. What's nice is I can now use these dark files in the future for batch preprocessing as master darks. It was very important to create them using the tool. I'll get more into that later. But what I would probably do is I would take this file and I would name it something that makes more sense and save it in my master library. For example, my camera. And then I would have uh, darks, uh, at perhaps the temperature, minus 15. And then I also like to put the gain that I use gain 174 and maybe the offset and I'd probably put the date as well or maybe I'd create a folder with the with the date and the exposure time of course so that's the 240 second dark master similarly to the one second now your integrated light frame will be right here. So if I were to take this, drag it back into Pix Insight, I'm going to get three images. Uh, the first one here is the high rejection. So if I stretch that, I get any high pixels that were rejected. And the next one is the low rejection. So if I stretch that, uh, you can see a little bit in the corner there. So that's usually a good sign. If you ever see stuff in those images, you want to try to do some debugging as to maybe you had some bad frames in there. Uh, now the final light frame, or the light master, will be called the HA. And if I stretch that, there's my uh, there's my image that's integrated. And I can see it's calibrated nicely. There's no glow in the corners, which typically I'd have a problem with if I didn't have this proper. Let me make this bigger. I only used a couple images for this as an example. Uh, the next part of this presentation, I'd like to show how to use data for multiple nights, and as well as how to use the master darks instead of the individual dark frames in the batch preprocessing tool. Okay, so I'd like to end this part of the presentation. Thanks.